recording here on a Friday afternoon in uh, New England and so great to be talking to you Kristen all the way in Colorado which I just can't wait to come out and visit and, and see what's going on so I want to quickly introduce you so uh, Kristen is the owner of Sundance Studio and I'm going to read this right off you guys so it's going to see a little seem a little canned um, so Sundance Studio is a welcoming sanctuary offering a variety of movement, fitness, and wellness services. Kristen and Sundance Studio are located in downtown Steamboat Springs, and it seems to be close to the Ski Mountain in Sundance Plaza. And you yes. have a bunch of different practitioners and all different kinds of modalities. And rather than me reading blah, 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 I'm just going to let you like dive in and tell us about everything that you're doing at Sundance Studio and who you're serving and who's showing up. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you. It's so good to be on this interview with you. Um, you know, Sundance Studio is, is actually located uh, halfway between downtown and the ski mountains. So... So we're not exactly downtown, but we are uh, strategically located to be convenient to all, all places wonderful in steamboats. So, um, you know, we started out as a yoga and dance studio offering um, kids yoga, adult yoga, kids dance, adult dance. And I had also two treatment rooms in, in my uh, space there with the intent of being able to offer a, a well-rounded um, service in, in, you know, thinking that wellness comes in, in lots of different ways. And, and so, um, you know, working out or taking a class alone is, is not necessarily going to get you on that path to, to wellness and that it takes a lot of different modalities and it takes a lot of different ways physical, spiritual, emotional, so many different ways, nutritional. Um, so, so we were attempting to try and offer a, a one-stop shop there. And, um, and a couple years into my lease, we expanded over into the neighboring uh, space, which then increased the wellness center up to seven different treatment rooms. And so now we have... Um, Numerous massage therapists, an esthetician, a life coach and counselor. Um, I recently just brought on an integrative health practitioner. Uh, so we have a, a real nice variety over there as well, in addition to the, the classes that we offer. And, and that ranges from, from yoga and dance. Those are still a couple of our staples. But we also offer bar fitness, um, something called eccentrics which is this wonderful thing. It's, it's all the rage at my studio. It's a blend of Tai Chi and Pilates and yoga. And so it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful fitness class. And then, you know, we have Zumba, we have hoop dance, hula hoop dance. Um, we have hip hop, adult hip hop. We have all kinds of fun things. So wow. that yeah. is so fun. I heard Steamboat Springs was awesome. And it's wonderful that you get to do all of that right in your space. Yes, and that's been a huge perk of owning the studio is the incredible opportunities that come my way. And you, my friend, are one of those. And so to be able to host a workshop and while you're in town visiting and touch on a topic that I think is so relevant in our community, it's, it's just, it's a big perk of, of the job that I get to, to meet people like you. I'm so excited to, to be there too. It's, it's, I've really been focusing on learning more about what the challenges are for, I would say, heart-centered entrepreneurs. And when I say that, I mean yogis and energy healers and light workers and creatives and, and the unique challenges that they face, and in particular, the fact that they are sensitive to energy and the fact that digital marketing can suck the energy right away from you. And so I did a survey a couple weeks ago. I had this big, hairy, audacious goal. And I sent out this survey to kind of gather information. And people were very kind and they filled it out. And what I found was people who describe themselves in that category, heart-centered with all of those um, subcategories, 
is that number one, the energy suck of digital marketing. Number two is not only is it an energy suck of, because of what's on the digital marketing, but it's also because they're not really sure how to do it right. And what does it mean to do it right? And the third thing, and this broke my heart, was that they don't want to send out emails, do any email marketing, because they don't want to bother people. I mean, that's the thing, right? They're heart-centered. They're so empathetic. They're like, I don't want to bother anybody. I don't want to shine. And the truth is the world needs them to shine. Right now, more than ever, our heart-centered entrepreneurs need to show up in a big and loving way to counteract a lot of what's happening right now and to be able to, even with each other, to be able to spot and see who's out there that's like me, right? Who's going to push me, you know, hold me up so that I can shine better, so that all of our boats rise at the same time. And I'm, I'm wondering, since this is who you work with every day in practice, do you hear similar things or do you hear certain challenges or I'll ask you that. And then I have another question for you. Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, I just brought on some yoga instructors that uh, have lived in this community for a long, long time, um, but are relatively new to teaching and particularly at my studio. And it's so interesting, even though they are so well loved and have so many friends and acquaintances throughout town, uh, it's very hard for them to promote the fact that they are now teaching yoga and offering this gift that they have to offer. And so, um, you know, I kind of have my laundry list of what I do when I'm introducing a new class. I, I create an event on Facebook and I like it and I share it with them and, and I do this and I do that. And so, um, so I'll share that list with them, you know, encouraging them to, to do that, to go ahead and do that. And boy, that hitting that publish button is really hard for them to put themselves out there and say, here I am and this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm offering. And so that that's intriguing. Um, and, and I do, I see it over and over, whether it's an instructor or whether it is someone who's embarking in their new uh, profession and to, to put themselves out there to, so that people are aware of their services. That's a difficult step for them, but it's pivotal. Right. Because how can they make that change if people don't know about them? And I would imagine too, I've spoken to a few um, studio owners and there's a limit to how much you can market to the same people over and over again. And so the owners that I've spoken to have found it helpful if I come in and I, and I talk with people and I almost say, you know, it's almost like your divine duty to get out there. Number one, because people need you, but also number two, Kristen, Kimberly, Jennifer need you to bring in more people because they can't do it on their own. And so, and I'm going to give you a quick example of this and I'll show it when I do your workshop um, in March. But um, I, one of my clients has a very small following, they're very local, very in town, kind of an older demographic, haven't really um, branched out much. So, you know, they maybe have, at, at, a couple years ago when we just started, they had 20 followers. And that's okay. You get 20 good followers, 20 good followers. And when they would share posts, they would get, you know, Facebook doesn't show face page posts that much. So they would get 10, 15, maybe views or likes or whatever. But there's one person on the board of this particular group. And she shared a post on her personal page. And that post got 1,700 views. Wow. Interesting. So when you think of that, right, if you're posting on your page right. and then somebody who's well connected in the community says, oh my gosh, you've got to check this out. Like, look at your insights. And that's where, right. you know, people are like, oh, analytics, insights, but it's kind of exciting to yeah. see how, what the difference is for a simple thing like that. Just say, hey, you know, could you share this for me and then watch it go off. So I could talk about that all day, but I'll be talking about that. <laughs> more and I'll have examples and then it, and once you see how it is it, it, um, 
it'll become more clear. And the fact is that if you set up parameters for yourself, and, and we'll find out what are the comfortable ones for the people who come to your workshop, because everybody is different, and we'll kind of see how they feel. Um, when you set up parameters and you set up a schedule, my feeling is then it feels like your favorite sweater. Like it doesn't feel icky like your scratchy sweater that you don't want to wear. It feels like your good sweater because you know what you're doing. You've already decided it feels good. And, and then you can uh, implement it, measure it, and then make adjustments if you need to. Right. Yes. I love that. Yes. You know, and word of mouth, of course, is always the best form of marketing, good old word of mouth, especially in small communities. Um, and I just, I liken this to a, a, a virtual word of mouth because, you know, people are communicating via social media. Yeah. And so when you share and it's, it's word of mouth, but through social media, the perk or the difference is that it can be spread exponentially yeah. versus one on one on one when you're exactly. physically sharing it word of mouth at the grocery that store. Or not. Yeah. And it feels better if you're in a group. So I do work with a lot of solopreneurs. And so um, sometimes they feel like they're, if they post something, it's just, them but it but the ones that I work with who are in a collaborative of some sort so similar to the Sundance community Sundance community yes. if they see others doing it and then they share the others then it feels like a private party right but it's having the same wonderful effects yes yeah <laughs> tell me what else is going on in your community other than classes I noticed on your schedule you've got all kinds of good stuff happening Yes, you know, we have a lot of fun informational workshops, uh, such as the one that, that uh, you'll be presenting. Um, we have one coming up on uh, pelvic floor health. Oh. We uh, just harvested a whole bunch of salad greens and herbs from a tower garden that we had. We were hosting in the wellness center and we planted these little starts six weeks ago and now they're just big leafy greens that we mm -hmm. harvested and created a, a salad out of had a salad a salad jar party um man we have all sorts of fun stuff going on it's there's no lack of that <laughs> that's awesome awesome i'm looking forward to coming out to steamboat springs i've never been to that area before. oh yeah how did you get started with the studio i know that's not where you started Yes, yes, that's, it's a funny thing. Um, you know, I have absolutely no education or background in, um, in running a, a business studio such as this. I ha also have not a day of marketing education. Uh, my degree is in soil science and I was working for the federal government and uh, my family and I, we had moved to Bozeman, Montana, mm -hmm. and the Great Recession hit. And interestingly enough, that's what created the opportunity to move to Steamboat. And so when we moved to Steamboat, um, I had a six-month-old baby, and I decided, well, hmm, maybe this is my time to take a stab at being a stay-at-home mom. I have always wanted to do that. I would like to give that a try. Well, Lo and behold, that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, and I used to dig holes for a living, so <laughs> it, was, it was quite challenging. So yes. I, I did that for a few years in Steamboat, and then um, kind of started looking around and, and seeing what I was needing in the community, and also listening to hear what the community was needing. You know, what, where, where is there a need? Where is there a niche? And I found that there was a need for, for uh, the kids' yoga and the kids' dance in particular, and, and another venue for uh, both yoga and dance. And so um, I, I just kind of chewed on it for a while, and, and when I collected information and thought about it, um, it just kind of snowballed. It just started rolling forward so, so readily, so easily. And it just kind of kept moving and kept moving. And I thought, my goodness, if something is coming 
to fruition this easily. You know, I'm not standing here beating my head against a brick wall, that truly there, there may be a need for this. And so, um, so I, that's how I got into it. And then that's when I jumped into my crash course on marketing. I wasn't even on Facebook at that point in time. Yeah. And I recognized that I had to be. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think is your most effective way of marketing your events? Well, I think for my demographic is Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think for uh, the 20 and 30 demographic is Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I do a combination of a lot of things um, from printing flyers and hanging them up all over town to paying for print ads in the local newspaper uh, to, you know, focusing on all the social media platforms. Um, the, you know, the print marketing I find is probably least effective, uh, social media most effective. And then of course, good old fashioned word of mouth. And yeah. so, um, so as, as long as you're putting yourself out there so that people know to promote you, um, then, then that definitely helps as well. So, yeah, I think the thing with print is you don't, there's just really no way to measure it. It could be effective, but you just, there's no way to measure it. You can't look at clicks or right. conversion rates. What about, do you do email marketing? I do, yes. yes. So I send out uh, monthly newsletters Wonderful. is what I do, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of promotion here while I have you on here. Our event is going to be on March 24th at noon to two at your studio so people who uh, may be in your area it's sundance studio steamboat springs you can find them on facebook you can find them on their website sundance-studio.com and put that on your calendar march 24th i'll be there with my kid two of my girls we're having a girls weekend going out to steamboat springs to meet with Kristen and Jalen, who introduced us um, who's been a wonderful healer. She did a lot of work on my, on my son, and he's been really happy with that. And I'm just looking forward to meeting all of the people in your community. Oh, yes. It's, yeah. it's amazing. You're going to have a wonderful time. Wow, we're looking forward to it. Is there anything <laughs> else that you'd want to um, add before I shut off the recording part of this? No, I think that's it. I think it's, uh, I think it's a wonderful gift that you'll be bringing in helping all of these these incredible healers, um, incredible energy workers, and, and those that are just very gifted. We do have a lot of those folks in our community and just help give them some guidance on how, how to make sure that the world is aware of their gifts because that is part of the service. That is part of their offering is that folks need to be aware that that's there. Yeah. And so that's, that's the important first step. And I'm, I'm grateful that uh, we'll have this opportunity to share that with them. Me too. And, what, and I would add to that, that if somebody sees this and they are friends with you or friends with me out in the area or, or whatever, I invite any questions ahead of time, anything that anybody wants me to address while I'm there to let me know ahead of time so that I'll be prepared with like deep, deep information if they want that. Um, Great. I'm looking forward to, again, like we'll just knit a sweater together. It's just going to feel really good um, <laughs> to be together and do something that feels um, like it has integrity. Right. And it has purpose. Very good. I'm looking forward to it, Kristen. So good. We'll Bye. see you soon. See you soon. I'm going to stop this recording.